This historic model by EMD is delivered in an outer shipping carton and the number on it denotes whether it's the Bucyrus 22B or this one which is the Ruston Bucyrus 22RB and the real 22RB was built in England for the European market. The box has got a nice old photo on the cover and on pulling out the innards there are a couple of brochures. One is a very nice reprint of the original marketing brochure for this historic machine and it therefore includes all the old technical information. This is a really nice inclusion with the model because it makes a link with the history of the real machine. So the model gets off to a good start and there's also an instruction sheet for it. This is a single sheet and it includes diagrams of how to set up the various configurations that are possible. It's fairly simple but it includes a parts list so it's good enough. So after the paperwork let's move to opening the box and it's factory sealed with tape. And if that's carefully cut then all the parts are carefully wrapped inside the box. With the 22RB out of the box there is some more packaging to remove. And the most difficult bit is the stiff film that's used to protect the tracks. The only thing to do is to cut it and carefully remove it, remembering at all times that this is quite a delicate small model so you don't want to damage it. The luffing ropes are also pre-reeved and there's some tape to remove from those. Firstly, the model uses really tiny nuts and bolts. So to make sure you don't lose any, put them in a bowl. And here for the first bit of assembly, we'll rig the crane in transport mode. So to do that, the first thing is to attach the luffing bridle to the lugs that are on the boom foot. And if you want to secure it properly, you can use nuts and bolts and use the special tools that are supplied in the box. As you can see, this is micro engineering, so it does need some patience. So here we have the luffing bridle all hooked up. And in the UK, the 22RB was often seen with the boom top chained to the boom foot for transport. Therefore, we'll have a go at trying to replicate that, and we'll just use a short length of chain to try and join the two pieces together. And once it's done, it works pretty well. The only other thing to do to have the 22RB ready for transport is to attach some walkways, one on each side. Now all we need is a suitable low loader to carry the crane. And here's an old timer Atkinson Ventura ready to pick up the 22RB. Once again we call on the giant hand to give the old girl a lift. And once it's on board, let's add a couple of boom sections to keep it company. Three different lengths are supplied in the box and these are the two shorter ones. So the first big plus point of this model is that it makes a very good historic transport load. But wait there's more, let's now configure it as a crane. For this we'll use the large boom section and this approximates to giving the crane a 50 foot boom. You could make a longer boom using the other boom sections but there are only enough bolts supplied to use one more section. Joining the boom sections is just a little bit tricky because of the way they've been made. So you have to force the bolting points to interlock. As you can see here you have to wrestle with it a little bit. But the best thing to do as soon as you've got the holes lined up is to feed a bolt into the hole. Then to secure the connections you use the special tools again. And now you can see why one of them has got a cranked end. And it's because it's the only way to get a nut into the right position in these very small boom sections. So again it is micro engineering but it's all done very well. The only other thing to be careful of is not to over tighten the nuts and bolts because they are so very small. The next thing is to connect the pendants to the luffing bridle. And again because of the small sizes it's all a little bit of fiddly work. These connections use pins which work okay, but the only negative point is that the other pendant positions are riveted and that reduces the flexibility a little bit. But if you're really keen you could drill those rivets out. Also the two pendant lengths were not exactly the same length on the review model, but that could be corrected. So with the boom all rigged up the last thing to do is to run the hoist line to the boom top and the winch is controlled by a special key through one of the doors in the model. After that the reeving is really quite straightforward. It's easy to thread the hoist rope over the boom top and then you can reeve up the very small hook block that's provided. And here it is and it's quite lightweight so it doesn't put much tension on the hoist ropes. Lastly we raise the boom by using the key on a different hoist winch. And with that the crane configuration is complete.
Looking underneath, and the detail's very good, both on the undercarriage and on the body. The metal tracks are nicely made. And a really nice detail is the drive chains, even if they are slightly large for the scale. The body captures the distinctive shape and colour scheme really well. And there are some tiny details, such as the rivet heads. The graphics on the body are also very small, but they're applied really well. Another high point of the model is the interior detailing, which is really good. The cab levers look great. And through the other opening doors, you can see engine detailing. And it shows that high quality modelling is possible, even on relatively small models. One interesting thing on this model is the boom sections, which are not the normal die cast. In fact, they seem to be of a kind of pressed sheet metal. That means the metal thickness is very thin, but it does keep the weight down, which is probably the compromise that allows the model to be stable when the boom is fully rigged. Having said that, the boom sections do look convincing and they have a nice profile. One of the configuration options for the model is as a drag line, and the drag bucket is a very nicely made metal part. Also very good is the metal clamshell grab, which is finely engineered. For the test of the features, we start off back in transport mode, and the crawler tracks have too much friction to roll on a smooth surface. But they are very willing to roll by hand, and actually the whole mechanism is something of an achievement because the drive chains also rotate. Let's give the tracks a chance on rougher terrain where they can bite, and actually they work well and roll nicely. One very nice feature of this model, given its small size, is the opening doors. And a plastic pointer is included with the model to help you get the doors open. And that's needed because they are a very good fit. At the rear there's a sliding door and that works really nicely. And moving round to the driver's cab, the sliding door there is also very good. One of the options for the model is to rig it as a drag line. And one of the connections you need to make is the rope from the fair lead which needs to join to the drag line bucket. Well, the idea is that it feeds through a small hole in the connector, and when it comes out the other end you tie a knot in it so that it's secure. But it's almost impossible, unless you're the sort of person that wins the lottery every week. So the way to do it is to get some very thin wire, and this is fuse wire that's being used, and you feed that through in the reverse direction. You loop the wire over, and because it's wire and it's very thin, it goes through easily. What you then have is a loop of wire, which you need to open up slightly, and when you've done that, you can then feed the end of the thread through the loop. After that, it's all easy because you just apply the magic, pull the wire back through, and it pulls the thread with it. With that done, you can then tie a knot off in the loose end, and that secures the connection to the dragline bucket. Here we now have the dragline bucket in its fully rigged state. And we can see now how the drag bucket works because it scoops up as it's pulled towards the crane. And to show how it empties, we'll just mock it up using some rocks in the bucket. The balance of the bucket is such that when you undo the drag rope, it tilts the bucket and empties it. Certainly in the UK, one popular application for the 22RB was as a demolition crane. And here the model is rigged up with an old fashioned drop ball. In fact, it's a small lead fishing weight and it's not included with the model. The last configuration option for the model is using the clamshell grab. And once it's properly rigged up, it works realistically, opening and closing by using the winches. The tagline to the boom is also adjustable. In summary, this is really a very nice model of the Rustin Bucyrus 22RB. It's high quality with great detailing and functionality, and most of all, it just looks realistic. It's certainly an outstanding model.